All right, so what we're gonna tie here is an EP bait fish. It looks like this. You can do it in a, just a host of colors, man. It's There's so, so many colors you can do this in. Uh, I think, actually, I'll put, bring that back up real quick. So the, the big key uh, is, for me anyway, uh, lighter color of your EP fiber on the bottom, darker color up top, okay? That's, that's kind of the big deal for me. So your EP fiber comes in bags that looks like this. You're gonna pull some out and you're gonna separate some. Uh, start at the top and just kind of work your way down off the side. I'm not gonna do the whole thing because I already did it. Uh, my video stopped recording the first time. Uh, so anyway, so to do one, you're gonna eye pull. You, you figure out what you need. I'm gonna pull about this amount off the side all the way down. I can grab it and start pulling quickly like that and uh, just kind of peel it off. Also, there's a couple ways to store this stuff. Oh. There's a couple ways to store this stuff. You can keep, put it back in its original bag, which I know a lot of people find hard to do. I'm gonna show you the little trick that I use. Or you could just get a zip tie and zip tie it together and store it in a big you know, freezer bag or something. But what I'll do is I actually just cut the bag down the side just a little ways there, a couple of inches, uh, so I can open it up and get my fingers in there to force feed it back in. And oh, I know that's awfully close, sorry. But uh, there you go, that's kind of how I store it. So what I have here is the uh, two pieces I've already cut. These were joined together. I, all I did was fold this material in half and snip it. And now I've got my two pieces. I did that with my top color too, which is gonna be this green. Green like this here, this little fluorescent neon green. Um, and for these, uh, you know, typically uh, the, some of the bigger hooks, the better. I'm gonna use my, actually, my last uh, B10S size one knot Gamakatsu. Get that guy in the vise there. There we go. And I'm also gonna be using, uh, as I do for most of my streamers, GSP, uh, this size is 100. So, uh, I'm just going to start kind of up towards the front and just work your way back. Now, this GSP can be slippery, so getting it started can be a little tricky. And you need some really sharp scissors to cut it. And your underbody wraps don't need to be perfect either. Uh, again, like most patterns when it comes to streamers, just pay attention to where uh, the the hooks the the top of the shank or the shank itself starts to move into the bend you can see on on this one here it really starts to move into the bend just past that hook point uh, and i i personally i really like to stay off of there so uh, this part can be a little tricky to learn so you have your you have your clump of gsp like this or i'm sorry your uh, ep fiber like this Okay, and we don't need to put all this on here. I mean, this is an absolutely absurd amount of material to use uh, at any given point on this. So what I like to do is I like to take my fingers and just kind of pull it apart a little bit like so. You'll start to learn the more that you do these that less is more, and I literally mean that. And so I'm just going to take a little bit here and just pull it away so you can still see how much I have left. Okay. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to really tighten it and straighten it out. And I like to get about a hook shank uh, width on this thing. You can see I'm a little over on here. Uh, and that's going to actually be quite a bit. Uh, I know it doesn't seem like it, but it's really going to be quite a bit. Um, so what we're going to do here on this video, just to kind of help shorten the time because it can get kind of crazy is I'm going to use a little bit thicker piece. I know it doesn't seem, this doesn't seem like very much, but it really is. And we're just going to kind of get started. So I'm going to take, uh, take my fibers. I'm going to run them out about two to two and a half link, uh, hook, uh, hook shank lengths back right off the top. I'm just going to pinch that tight right on top. I'm just going to put 
a loose wrap over, keep that positioned. Put a second one in going towards the back, and then my third wrap over towards the front. So I started in the center, I took my wrap to the back, and then my last one to the front. Now I can pull this down and this material is in place in three wraps. That's pretty key in this pattern for the way I do it. Now I can just fold this over. You, by the way, you can tie tons of materials in that way. Now I'm just going to fold this over. You can see I'm forming a little loop there and I do that so that I have a little fold over action going on right here where I can easily come over and capture more. I'm going to have this little knot in front. It's really no big deal because it's going to get tied in with a few wraps. Now we're started. I've got my top color in. Same thing with the bottom color. I'm going to come in and just get some, pull it away. And I want to have it about the width of my hook shank. Now, there's two ways to do this. You can just take this the whole lot and bring it in on the side, like so. Put a wrap in, fold it over, put a wrap in. You can do it that way. Or you can invert your vise. And I just, and then you can just kind of pinch it and fold it and just push it through and feed it through. This way it becomes a little more difficult. You can see that I'm having to draw all the material back through and line it up, but you can do it either way. Uh, and you can add more, more than one color too. So, so there you go. I do kind of like the first way a little bit better because I can control what's going on here a little easier. Now I'm just going to tie that down so I don't have to mess with it. Uh, the thicker you want your bait fish to be, okay, uh, you're, we're basically going to just start over right here about a bodkin width. Let me zoom in so you can see that. Sorry camera adjustment time uh, you basically just start right here okay and you can see my threads a little forward and I want to bring it actually just a little bit more forward so I've got about two bodkin widths between here and now I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to get I'm going to get my top color separate some make sure that it's about the same diameter as the hook shank and one over the top one to the back one to the front tight and I'm going to form a little loop and just capture all that down with one more pull and now I'm ready for my bottom color uh, this time what I'll do is I'll go on the bottom side and I'll split it like the the way the first way I showed you instead of folding it all together and uh, having to push it around the needle so now I'm just gonna put this wrap on this side oh, I'm gonna need one more I can just fold this to the rear pull it all to the back around the hook point there and just tack that in now you can see how much material is building up and how quickly it is. So we can advance our thread just a little bit here. We don't have to we don't have to keep bundling it all together. Matter of fact, actually the more you do that, the more material that you're just going to end up wasting. Um and just having to cut I mean literally you're just going to have to cut it away and shed it shed it all all the way in trimming. So I'm going to do the same thing, divide it again. And I still have a full half bundle here. And just place that on top. One in the middle, one to the back, one to the front. Fold it over, put in my loop. Whoop. Put in my loop, maybe. Let's spin that thread up. 
just not wanting to catch. Let me try that again. There we go. Put a couple in. And you can see how this fiber is covering all this hook shank. Now we're going to brush this all out. So everything that you see right there that's exposed on the side, that's going to get covered. So don't worry about that. And again, I'm going to put one over here on the side. Turn it around, fold it in half. There we go. I can just tighten that down, advance my thread forward. And we're just going to do this all the way up. Uh, just, just literally, this is it. All the way up. Get my next bundle. Put it on top. Again, one in the middle, one to the back, one to the front. And use that, don't, by all means, use that technique for uh, all kinds of materials. One in the middle, one to the back, one to the front. You can tie all kinds of materials in that way, even on things like nymphs and everything else, uh, and really save yourself thread wraps. That's a good technique. I'm going to run short on my white. That's okay. And get a little more. So just do one over, fold it. Oh, I missed it. You'll know if you miss it because it pops out. So I just need to move that forward just to fuzz. So I can, there we go. And I can advance my thread forward. And the next batch, the more you do it, you'll know basically how much you need to pull off. One in the middle, one to the back, one to the front. Make a loop, fold. And, you'll, and you can see how much material. Look at, I mean, look how much that's bulking up. This stuff bulks up big time. So again, less is more. I mean, I could literally probably half everything that I just showed you. Okay, and tie that down. You can also put little thread dams in front, kind of like so, and just build that up to help that pop open if you want until your uh, t until your desired length. And again, I'm gonna do one on this side. Do a wrap over. I'm going to have to do two. It's getting a little squ squiggly on me, squiggly. There we go. Rush to the back. Advance my thread forward. So I really need... Looks like I'm going to need two more here. Uh-oh. Maybe not. Maybe I can just do it in this one. One in the middle, one in the back, one forward. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do it all right here. All right, and one on the side, two over. Go around to the other side. You can see, like, the more you keep adding it, it really starts to, you can really start to mess with you. That's kind of a big nose. So, let me add one more. So it's not quite so big. And... I get just a little bit more white here. So I got to fold it over, cut it in half, two bundles. Now, 
We've got this big Pac-Man glob. It's kind of what I call it. All we got to do now is just build a nose. And we're literally literally just going to build a nose and just all nice and tight with thread. And we want to keep that small. I'm going to zoom in there. So you can see that this is this nose is really not very big. Okay? And then what I'll do is I'll just take my glue and add it right to my thread. I'm going to hold my thread out towards me so that it doesn't run down the uh, down the string because you don't want to get that into your bobbin. And I can quickly come in and just add a wet whip. A wet whip. First time I heard that somebody call it that was Charlie Craven, which I thought was like, hey, you know what? That's a pretty, pretty cool name. Pull that thing nice and tight. And snip it off. Okay, we're all done. Sort of. We're only done tying. Now we've got to cut this thing. And this part, let me get this zoom back out. This part can be intimidating and it can be tricky and if you mess it up then there went your fly. So uh, a good way to start doing this is just to kind of whittle away at it, literally. Just a little here, a little there. And as you're doing it, grab it by the uh, hook point, or um, well, you can gra yeah, grab it by the hook bend, or grab it by the eye, is what I meant to say. And you can just kind of turn it back and forth, back and forth as you're doing that. Uh, for me personally, what I like to do before I do this is I'll take a brush, and this is just a uh, like a dog brush. It's got the metal spikes on it. And I'm going to grab it in front, and I'm just going to start brushing this whole fly out so that all these fibers pull out. It's going to cover everything inside. So see all this stuff that's inside right there? You just grab that, you start pulling it out, and it's going to, it's going to fill in that gap for you. It's hard to do it this way. I'm going to have to put this back on the vise. So, we're going to keep the uh, trimming dem demonstration short because you can really spend forever doing this. Uh, you, just, you can just keep cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting. Oop. Put the camera in the way. <laughs> it's hard for me to do this. Blame the, blame the machine. Blame the technology. All right. Oop. Turn that over. And you can see I've still got this little bit up front here. And you just literally Oops, sorry. Busting up the camera angle there. But you literally just keep working away at it. And it will you're gonna end up drawing all that fiber out. And you're gonna you're gonna want to keep these brushes handy because you're gonna want to do this a couple of times throughout the process just to help get rid of any short hair material or whatever. Oh man, I didn't quite get all that thread off. Okay, so so what I like to do is I like to actually kind of. Uh, cut it to this profile and I'm not going to do a full cutting demonstration here I don't think because you know it takes some time because you want to keep maneuvering it around looking at the back looking at the underbelly so that it keeps this rounded and nicely shaped profile uh, and it can take a little time you know I don't want to I don't want you guys aren't interested in watching me cut this thing for 15 minutes I'm sure uh, which can frequently happen so we're just going to give you the short tutorial uh, what I like to do is I like to turn around and kind of cut from the back. I, I find out that I kind of get better results more quickly that way. 
And the first thing I do is I come in and just kind of trim out all this, you know, straggly hair. And oh, let's see if I turn it so it's like this. You can see I've got a big old bulk on this side here. I know it looks white. It's really not. You saw that it was green. So you want to shape this thing from all sides. Okay, and when it's in the water, it's going to compress a little bit, but not not a super amount, okay? So you can see I'm kind of getting my tail in there, and I'm just going to come in and kind of hack away at it there. I'm going to turn it over. Now, clipping into the hook shank, or the hook bend is a little more difficult but it's basically the same premise I'm watching where I'm cutting on all sides as I come around and if you're not sure don't make the snip you can draw some fibers back out and take a look and you see the more we cut away at it the more it starts to shape itself now you can come back this other way too and get some nicer cleaner cuts I've just found that I can make larger gains going the other way initially And we're going to add a little bit more belly to this. See, now I can kind of grab it and start pulling it. So say you're going after a, uh, to imitate like a sunfish or something, then you're going to want this big fat profile like that, just like a sunfish has. Uh, if you're doing something saltwater, uh, you know, you, you can shape this to imitate whatever, uh, you know, saltwater bait fish that uh, look that you're going for. So you can just kind of keep keep going at it and you can literally do this like all day. Like just whittle away at it until you get the profile. Uh then you get it back here and you start to brush it out again to see where it's fluffing out and how the shape's coming together. The tail's kind of the hard part to do. So every time you brush it out a little bit, you'll see that more stuff comes up like that, and you're like, oh, hey, I gotta kind of trim that tail back in there. And that's really, I mean, this is really it as far as that's concerned. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm out of camera. And I can kind of draw that together, see how it looks on the other side. You know, it's starting to look pretty good. I kind of want to get right into that hook point, though. So that, that hook point is exposed. And we're just going to keep working it. Work it, work it, work it. Until until you get the shape that you want. Okay? So I'm not going to sit here and cut this whole shape. And I could, I'll be here for another 10 minutes. And nobody wants to watch that. But you can kind of get the idea. You can see how, I'm, you can see how it's, the shape is slowly coming together as a bait fish shape. Okay, so now I'm going to put this back in the vise. So now you've got it trimmed to where you, want, where you want it, where you like it. And seriously, I'm just like, oh, no, I can't have that. Once you start hacking away at this, you will understand my dilemma right now, which is kind of funny. Okay, well, sorry. I know I keep saying I'm gonna stop. Now I'm gonna stop. So now I've got this uh, bait fish pattern right where I want it. Okay, keep this. I gotta get the scissors out of my hand because I'm about to hack away more at it. So anyway, uh, I'll bring this other one up. You can kind of see where I'm going with this uh, as far as that's concerned. 
Uh, that's kind of the profile I'm going for. Uh, next is to add the eyes, and you can add a ton of eyes here, whatever whatever your preference is. What I'm going to use here is just some Mirage eyes. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I've got I've uh, I've just got some Mirage eyes in 7:30 seconds. You can see that. Uh, so these are basically f uh, just flat stick-on eyes. Uh, they have no no profile to them. Uh, the way I like to put these on is with some uh, this uh, Loctite super glue, the gel, gel super glue. And I'll come in and I will just put, whoop. I turn my vise on the side and I'll put a dab of super glue right where I want the eyeball. I don't know if you, oh yeah, you can't see that, but right where I want my eyeball, right there. And I do it on the side so that I can kind of lean into it a little bit with my bodkin. And I'll just put that eye on my bodkin and set it where I want it, push down, uh, and that's it. You can, you can also, uh, you could use UV resin and uh, dab UV, UV resin on the top of this and then have that UV resin just bleed into the fiber a little bit. You can totally do that too, uh, just for some extra protection. And then I'm gonna do the same thing right here. You gotta kinda line it up to make sure that you're in the same spot, which is a little difficult for me to show you on camera. Maybe I can do another video on how to line your eyes up. And I'll just get my other one. And just plop that guy on. Okay, now once you've got that, those eyes set on with the, that super glue, if you're using the gel like I am, just dab it on and leave it. Don't keep pressing into it because what's going to happen is that glue is going to start to come out the sides and then you're going to touch it with your bodkin or something. Next thing you know, the eye is coming back off and it's stuck to your bodkin. That uh, can be a real mess. And here I go trimming again. See? It's addicting. You're like, oh no, I just can't. I just can't have that shape on this bug. So, anyhow. So, but there it is. That's the EP bait fish. And uh, if you like the video, subscribe, share. Uh, also, if you have not joined uh, our Facebook group, Fly Tying for Beginners. Uh, please do so. We'd love to have you there. Just answer the questions and that gets you in. See, now I'm getting talking, getting bold, making more cuts. My shape's starting to come together. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to sit here and trim away on this uh, a little bit until I get it where I want it. And, um, you know, that's pretty good. So there you go. The EP bait fish. Enjoy. It's a fun tie.